welcome and and also thank you for the invitation to the seminar i'm very much looking forward to it and also looking forward to your comments about our paper so yes i will present um, our paper on eu enlargement and temporary migration and the effects on labor market outcomes in germany which is joint work with matthias Hertweg. So in, uh, for, since 2004, 11 countries from Central and Eastern Europe joined the European Union. However, Germany initially maintained restrictions for, um, for, uh, for persons from these um, countries on free movement of workers. So they could not enter the German labor market easily. And these restrictions expired successfully, uh, successively then starting from 2011. Immediately from 2011 on, this uh, led to a strong rise in CEE immigration, which exceeded exante forecasts by 50% and more. So overall, we saw uh, between the years 2011 to 2019, more than 1.7 million persons from CEE countries uh, migrating to Germany. And this eventually led to uh, also a strong increase of the share of CE nationals in the German labor force. So it rose from around 1% to almost 4%. And the main uh, aim of our paper is now to quantify the short and medium run effects of this uh, strong migration uh, movement on labor market outcomes in Germany. So this recent CE migration was special in two um, aspects. So um, on the one hand side, this uh, migration was uh, mainly labor market oriented. So most um, of these immigrants came already with a job offer and um, to take up a job here in Germany. So job search was the main migration motive. And um, we can see this, for instance, um, because even though there came so many um, CE nationals, the unemployment rate among CE nationals in Germany fell strongly during this period. And this suggests that the CE immigration inflows are positively selected, so that mostly workers with uh, which fit well to the German labor market demand came. And on the um, other hand, um, owing to free movement of workers, which was then extended from 2011 on, temporary and return migration was very common among the CE nationals. So now CE nationals could move uh, freely uh, across borders and work in Germany and return to their country of origin or to move to other countries. So um, over this, between 2011 and 2019, we saw more than 5 million persons actually moving to Germany, but at the same time, we also saw that more than 3 million persons left Germany again. So this leaves this net migration inflow of 1.7 million. So we say that these um, out migration inflows or outflows um, are very selective um, because mostly those immigrants leave who are not very successful in the German labor market and we, we call them in our pay, we call them the stayers. So those who stay in the German labor market for several years, that those are even more closely geared to, to um, local labor market demand. So just to give you an impression of the extent of um, in and out migration, here I plot the number of recent immigrants um, by year of arrival. So the blue bar always gives the number of recent immigrants who are in the first year in the German labor market. So we see in 2011 the strong rise of first year immigrants compared to the year 2010. So that's when the first extension of this free movement of workers was granted. Then the red bar gives the number of recent immigrants who are in their second year in the um, German labor market. So actually, if all would stay, this blue bar would be the same height as the red bar in 2012. But we can I interrupt you for a second? If you, yeah. Because we don't see the graph, or at least I don't see it. If, uh, if you're intending to show it on the screen. You're uh, not seeing the graph? No, sorry. Like I still see the first. Um, ah, OK. Then I, I will share my slide again. No, 
now you can see it so yeah uh yeah now it's perfect <laughs> okay okay yeah so then um yeah i will uh, describe it again so yeah we see here in 2011 the blue bar is the strong rise in the number of recent immigrants and from 2011 to 2012 you should compare the blue bar to the red bar so we see that there's a drop of those who remain and in 2013 that's when they are in the third year it drops even further but the drop is not that significant anymore so many immigrants leave after one year and this pattern remains stable over all years so um, our paper um, provides a framework to study the labor market effects of EU immigration in Germany in times of free movement when both migration in and outflows are large and selective. And for this, for the purpose, we adopt a dynamic shift chair approach, which I um, will explain in detail in a second. Mm. And this strategy allows us to separately identify the potentially opposing short and medium run effects of labor, of uh, immigration on labor market outcomes in Germany. And just to give you a brief preview on the results. So what we find is that there's a temporary um, dampening effect on wages among um, the domestic in the domestic work, uh, workforce, particularly at the bottom of the wage distribution. And this is exactly where most CE immigrants are located. So most of them work in low wage sector. And we, on the other hand, we find positive uh, effects on domestic employment um, and these positive effects are permanent okay so now let's start um, slowly with the data set and with some descriptive statistics so we use a sample of integrated labor market biographies which is um, an, a large administrative data set in germany and we concentrate on the years 2005 to 2017 and we distinguish um, three main groups so we on the one hand side we have german nationals so persons who were all the time that they were observed in the CIAP were observed having a german nationality then we have the um, group of permanent foreign foreign nationals so that these are persons who at least at one point of time were observed having a foreign nationality but they have no recent migration experience so these are persons who might be have a foreign nationality, but might be second gen generation immigrants, for instance. And then we have the group of recent immigrants who came with uh, in the last five years to Germany. And within this group of recent immigrants who, who actually constitute our migration supply shock, um, we distinguish between new arrivals, so persons, recent immigrants who are in their first year in Germany, and stayers who are in their second to fifth years, so those who stay longer in Germany. And yeah, just to give you um, an overview over the migration dynamics in Germany um, in the last years, so the blue line gives the um, density of new arrivals, so immigrants in their first year, relative to the domestic workforce. And we see the strongest increase is from 2010, 2011, and then in 2013 and 2014. So these are only EU migrants, and that was when always um, the free movement of workers was extended to more countries. So in 2013, it was extended, for instance, to Romania, Bulgaria, and then in 2014 to Croatia. And the green line gives um, the density of stairs relative to the um, domestic workforce. So stairs are those, remember, who stay longer in Germany. So, and as I so showed in the first graph, not all immigrants stay. So um, we see that it rises steadily, but it it is um, if you would accumulate this um, number, it would actually even um, stronger this increase. So yeah, and then we wanted to have a look at what might be reasons or potential explanations why some immigrants stay and others leave after a short period of time in Germany. So 
Here in the left um, panel, we plotted the um, average wage gap of relatives to the domestic work uh, of um, recent immigrants relative to the domestic workforce. And we distinguish between different groups of leavers or stayers. So here the blue dot gives uh, shows that the average wage gap of recent arrivals who just stay at most one year is almost 50%. So they earned very low wages. And those persons who leave um, within the first two years, they also earn really low wages. Very different um, in comparison are the groups of persons who stay longer. So here, this light blue line are those persons who stay at least five years. And we see that over the whole first five years, the average wages um, increase. Um, for those who live uh, leave after these leave after three years and those they leave after four years for these persons we see that the average wages appear to drop briefly before they leave so we conclude that they're probably rather uh, less successful in the German labor market and we see a similar pattern when it comes to unemployment dynamics so this appears to be particularly important for the groups of persons who leave um, after third, after the third or fourth year. So just before they leave, they, their unemployment rate um, builds up. So yeah, they then they return to their host, home country or move to another country. Um, yeah, and this also shows in the average wage gap. So. Here we compare the wage gap of recent immigrants relative to um, German nationals. And this um, wage gap is really large in their first year. So in their first year in Germany, um, they earn on average 37% uh, lower wages than German nationals. And in the fifth year, so the longer they stay, this wage gap, gap decreases a lot. So now it's only 17%. Compared to um, comparing the average wages of recent migrants and permanent foreign nationals, we see that from the beginning, the wage gap is smaller and it decreases to only 7% in the fifth year. So what might be reasons for these, this uh, decrease? So on the one hand side, of course, um, recent immigrants might acquire more country specific experience so they improve their language skills and that would then also um, make it easier for them to find jobs which actually fill um, or fit well with their former qualification level because what we see often is that very high educated, formerly high educated recent immigrants, for instance, in, in the beginning work in jobs far below their um, qualification level so they do very unskilled work and this um, skill mismatch um, decreases over time and then another point of course is that not um, all immigrants stay as I said in the beginning so in the fifth year there are less immigrants and as we've seen here those who perform well they stay and those who don't perform well um, leave so this then also um, so this means that the in the fifth year, the group of stayers, they are very different from those who are in their first year. This is, explains also why the wage gap decreases. So what do we learn from this for our econometric analysis? So um, we've seen that stayers, so those who remain in Germany for more than one year, much more closely on domestic labor demand. They are more successful, they earn higher wages, they are less often unemployed. And it's very, um, yeah, it makes sense to assume that those new arrivals and that those who stay um, exert potentially opposing effects on the domestic labor market. And if we don't um, consider this, or if we neglect this, this um, leads to a conflation of the estimated labor market um, effects. And to capture both effects, so the ex ex uh, effect of current as well as of past immigration, we include the stocks of new arrivals and the stocks of stayers in our empirical analysis. So yes. Mm. 
So in our empirical approach, um, remember we want to estimate the labor market effects of immigration. We exploit the variation in immigration densities across 75 spatial planning units in West Germany over time. So um, on the one hand side, we want to investigate the effects on wage growth and we do that by analyzing the effects on annual regional wage growth rates along the wage distribution. So this means that within regions, we um, divide the um, wages, wage distribution into 10 D styles for um, German nationals. And then we estimate the um, effect on wage growth per wage decile. For local permanent, uh, for permanent foreign nationals, we um, do it similarly, just that we don't compute D styles, but quartiles that is given that there are less foreign, uh, permanent foreign nationals in our sample or overall in Germany. And then we account for the dynamic adjustment processes to um, the current as well to uh, previous immigration. Uh, and we also, we do not only look at um, wage effects, but we also estimate the effects on employment growth among full and part-time employees again, separately for German nationals and for permanent foreign nationals. So what is usually done in the um, in economics is to um, estimate a, a regression specification similar to this. So what you would do is to estimate, uh, so the dependent variable would be the uh, wage growth or average wage growth um, within P, P denotes here that it's a specific wage decile in a region R at year T. And then we control for decile specific regional fixed effects. We include several um, control variables, which include regional and national uh, characteristics. But what is the main parameter of interest is this um, here. So this blue parameter is the density of new arrivals relative to the domestic um, workforce. And um, as I said in the beginning, so we believe that not only the impact of the new arrivals has an impact on um, labor market outcomes, but also the density of earlier uh, migration cohorts. So we include the density of those current new arrivals and we include the density of um, stayers. So those who came for um, two to five years earlier than this, um, these persons here, so, but who still remain in Germany and who are still working here. So yes, so estimating migration in, uh, effects has some uh, challenges. So the most important one is that it is not random to which regions immigrants move. And remember in our estimation, we want to compare the migration densities between different regions. So if most immigrants would prefer to move to a prosperous region, then when we just simply estimate uh, the effect of migration density on wages, for instance, this would probably be, the estimate would probably be upward biased because immigrants mostly live in these prosperous regions. So we somehow have to control for the, the endogeneity of regional immigration choices. And what is often done in, in the literature is to use a shift share instrument, which uses past settlement patterns of immigrants. But um, in the presence of dynamic adjustment processes, um, if, if wages not only um, respond to the current inflows, but also to earlier inflows, then these IV estimates likely conflate the negative short run effects and the medium run positive adjustments. This was um, shown by Jäger et al. 2018. And they um, suggest to disentangle these effects to include the current and lagged immigration inflows. So they, they just lag the current, so they include the current immigration density and also uh, include the current immigration density lagged by one year. 
and then they instrument them accordingly with a shift share instrument. But we say that it's not, at least in a, for a country as Germany, um, where temporary migration is so important, it's, it's not sufficient to just lack the current immigration, but rather we have to adjust the, the, the um, lacked immigration inflow for those who stay. And then we use um, dynamic Baltic type shift share instrument. So what is generally the idea for this type of M, uh, instrument is that migrants tend to settle in regions with large migrant populations, particularly from the same country of origin. And then this, um, then you predict the uh, migration density in a certain region by um, national shifts of the um, number of new migrants coming from country of origin O in a certain year. And this is then weighted by the regional density of persons from country of origin O in some base year. So our base year is 1998. And so for instance, if in 1998, 50% of all French migrants were living in Düsseldorf, then the weight for all French shifts uh, in the years afterwards would be 50% in Düsseldorf and um, less in other regions. And so we in our setting, we have two endogenous variables. So on the one hand side, it's the density of new arrivals. And on the other hand side, it's the density of stayers. And we instrument both with such a shift share instrument, just that for the density of stairs, these shifts are computed using the, um, the shifts of the previous four years. Are there any um, questions so far with regards to the method? No, okay. Then I will proceed with the results and this large table. So um, as I said in the beginning, we um, estimate the effects along the wage distributions, so along different wage decides. So these are 10 wage decides and also on average wages. And I will start with my explanation as now with the effect on average wages. So panel A shows the um, regression results using this conventional um, specification. So that is this one where we just include the current density of um, immigrants. And we see that with um, a 1% um, density of new arrivals dampens the regional wage growth by 0.8 percentage points and it's significant. And then in panel B, we repeat this um, regression, but now we include the density of new arrivals and stayers. And we see that the wage dampening effect of um, recent arrivals becomes even more strongly negative, but then there is a positive catching up effect in the years afterwards, or not in the year, but um, from those um, who came earlier. And we see that the effects are most negative in the lowest wage desires. So there the effects are very strong. But now I, I will illustrate it graphically because I find it easier than just from the table. So um, here I compare, compare the, um, the conventional estimates and our dynamic estimates. So the dark green bar gives the conventional estimates. So we just include the current density of new arrivals. And for our dynamic um, estimate, you, we estimate this light green bar, which is a negative short run effect. And then afterwards, the positive um, term effect. And we see that indeed this um, conventional estimates conflates. So it kind of mix, uh, mixes up this very strong immediate negative effect and the positive catching up effect afterwards. So it's kind of like an omitted variable bias here. And what is um, more interesting perhaps from a policy point of view is that um, 
we see that the um, negative effects are strongest in the lowest wage decides. No? So here they, in the first, second, and third um, wage decides, the effect are the immediate effects are very strongly strong negative. Um, but they also have the largest positive catching up effects afterwards. Let me say one um, note to this bar here in the tenth wage decides. So. I would suggest that you don't overinterpret this um, decide because probably these very high wages, there's a lot of fluctuations going on. And generally, our results are very robust. But just for this group, the results change a lot if whatever we ch um, for different specifications. So, um, yeah, don't overinterpret this, um, the, the tense wage decide. So yeah, let's concentrate on the uh, lower wage deciles. And um, here the um, green line gives the density of um, or plots how many uh, how many percent of the um, new arrivals are located in the um, domestic or lowest wage decile according to their wage. So. And it's plotted here. So 50%, almost 50% of new arrivals have earned so low wages that they would be located in the lowest wage decile. So it appears kind of, it's kind of intuitive that then obviously also the wages of, um, low, of the lowest earning um, German nationals are hurt the most because there's most competition going on there. And um, yeah, the share of um, very low earning immigrants, it decreases. And here, yeah, less than 10% are located in, the, in each of the upper deciles. And the blue line is the density of stayers. So um, those who remain. And we see again here this um, pattern of catching up. So 50% in the first year were located in the first wage decile but less than 40% are located in the lowest wage decile after one year. So yeah, then they appear to rather move up the um, local wage distribution. Then um, now we have this advantage that we have can compare or estimate the dynamic effects um, on mean wages of German nationals. So this here is um, the estimated total effect of a 1% inflow of permanent immigrants. So immigrants, new immigrants who stay at least five years. And we see that in their first year, they exert a significant negative effect on domestic wages. However, this wage dampening effect decreases over time and it's not significant anymore from um, here yeah, the fourth year on. And here, we compute the um, overall wage effect on average wages um, using the observed um, densities of recent immigrants. And the black line gives a dynamic estimate. And we see that, um, remember, the, the strongest migration uh, inflow was in 2011 and then also in 2014 to 2015. We see that also in these years, the wage dampening effect is um, most the most negative are the most negative ones. But then afterwards, from 2015, we see that this uh, very strong negative um, wage effect disappears, and uh, it becomes even insignificant from 2018 onwards. So here, there's still this very Im negative immediate wage effect happening, but afterwards, we see this positive catching up effect. And again, we compare it to the conventional um, short-term estimate. That's the dashed blue line. And we see in the beginning, the estimates are similar. But what is interesting is here is here this difference. No? So our dynamic estimates su suggest that there's some catching up effect. So immediate after the immediate negative wage effect, there is a positive catching up effect. And the conventional estimate, on the other hand, suggests that this um, negative effect is permanent and will happen over the whole time. So it's a very different conclusion. 
So I said uh, in the beginning that we are not only looking at German nationals, but also at permanent foreign nationals. So probably a group which is more likely, uh, more alike to the, or more similar to the recent uh, immigrants. However, we do not find um, significant wage effects. So the, the signs of the coefficients are similar, but um, yeah, they are not significant. Um, and then we also have a look at the effects on domestic employment. And again, we distinguish between German nationals and permanent foreign nationals. And let's have a look at the dynamic estimates. So um, now the picture is a bit different than with the wage effects, because now we find an immediate and significant positive effect on total um, domestic employment while there is a negative effect on part-time employment growth, but this positive employment growth effect is pr thus probably driven by um, effects on full-time employment. And the effects uh, of the stayers are not significant. So this suggests that we just have a positive, a significant positive short-run effect and because there's not, nothing happening afterwards. So th this suggests that this effect is permanent. Whereas the wage effect, it was temporary. So it was offset by the density of stairs afterwards. And for permanent foreign nationals, the picture is very similar, just that there um, it's not so much clear whether this is really driven by part-time, the positive employment effect is really driven by part-time or by full-time employment growth. So yes, let me end with the discussion. So um, yeah, what we found just to quickly summarize this was um, temporary negative effects on wages and positive employment effects for everyone in Germany. Um, however, if for the um, immigration to Germany in the 1990s, um, research rather found um, rather small labor market effects among German nationals, but they found very strong negative employment and wage effects on permanent foreign nationals, whereas we don't find negative employment effect. So what we think might be potential explanations for this difference is that the migration was very different in the 1990s. So in the 1990s, it was mainly refugee migration from former Yugoslavia. So they, um, yeah, they often had no work permits. Whereas now, as I said in the beginning, the, this time migration was labor market oriented. So most or many of these immigrants already had a job offer. So they did not actually compete for jobs with the domestic labor force because they already had their job fixed. So there were no crowding out effects. On the contrary, it might have helped the domestic labor force to find newly created jobs, which are complementary. So if these um, the um, new immigrants rather work in low paid um, jobs, which are complementary to higher paid jobs, this might in the longer run then actually also lead to positive um, wage effects. That's the coefficient of the stayers. And um, a second note, um, those newly created jobs, so because the immigrants created new, new jobs, this um, may still be, have been um, especially low wage jobs, which, which would then change the composition of the domestic workforce. No, So because now then we would have a larger share of um, low paid jobs for German nationals. So then, yeah. And just also um, a note on these the, uh, the wage dampening effects that we find, sometimes people are really surprised and say, ah, the coefficients that you find are really strongly negative. However, I say that this initial wage dampening effect for the low paid um, in Germany is um, only significant um, up until 2018, then it turns um, insignificant. And also, let, if we put it in numbers, so in 2015, when there was the 
peak of this EU immigration, the estimated wage dampening effect for the lowest wage decide, so for the first decide amounted to um, or reduced their wage growth by approximately, approximately 1.5 euro um, per day. And so we would have to compare this um, outcoming with the counterfactual scenario. So what would have been the wage growth rate? Would there have been zero immigration, zero EU immigration? And so we observed, in fact, a wage growth of um, 1.7 euros. So if we add this um, wage growth, which was lost, the 1.5, then the counterfactual scenario would have been more than three euros. So in this worst um, year, so for the first wage decide, the wages, the wage growth was almost halved, but wages never fell. So that's something a conclusion to avoid here. Yeah. So let me just quickly summarize um, our findings. So a large part of this recent EU migration is temporary and out migration is very selective. So successful immigrants tend to stay and we find um, wage effects that are negative, but they are transi transitory. And um, on the other hand, however, we find um, very significant positive employment effects and these effects are permanent. And thus um, our findings thus help to reconcile this puzzle, puzzling phenomenon that um, in Germany, we had a, a period with very subdued wage growth, but strong employment growth. And we can add to this puzzle by explaining it to the um, through the migration inflows. And what I think is very important to keep in mind is that once we account for dynamic adjustments, um, the initial wage dampening effect is um, not as uh, persistent as suggested by the conventional estimations. So yes, that <laughs> it was for my side. Thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you very much, Luisa. Yeah, let's open the floor for any questions, any comments. If you do have a question or a comment, um, you could um either raise your hand um or just unmute unmute yourself and ask a question well if no one else has a question i can start off here thanks for the presentation it was it was it was really interesting um, I'm. I would like you to maybe take the the analysis that you did a step further, and uh, I'm wondering, you know, what the analysis that you've done um, can really say for policy. So, you know, if you're talking to um, German policymakers uh, nowadays, for instance, what advice could you give them from the past? Do you want me to reply to immediately? Uh, sure. Yes, go ahead. Okay. It doesn't look like people are beating down the door to ask questions, so go ahead. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, my, I think what for me is most important is actually this last con uh, conclusion is that usually people perceive immigration as really putting a permanent negative um, or wage dampening effect on local wages. And we say um, this conclusion is not true so easily so you really have to consider that also um, migration puts some upward pressure in the long run on uh, local wages which from which um, the country can or the receiving country can actually benefit and that's one thing we have to consider so would you suggest then uh, more avenues for permanent migration to germany um I mean, this, these are the kinds of questions that policymakers would push you on, right? Yeah, so yeah, with, yeah. with research here. So what does that mean? And if it's only in the, and if it's maybe not so good in the short run, does that mean that they should stop all of their seasonal programs? I, I, <laughs> I'm I asking you a, difficult questions. Though. Yeah, I'm, I find it a bit difficult to make like this very firm um, reply here. So, I mean, what we see is that 
it hurts, especially this short run negative effect hurts mostly people, local people in the lowest wage um, distribution. No? So for them, even though the um, effect disappears over time, it, it, is, it is somewhat tough in the short run. So I'm finding it hard to say promote migration, yes or no. So yeah. Yes, of course. I, I know these are these are these are difficult questions. Yeah. Thanks. I see now some other people have questions also. I saw Lisa raised her hand first, so you can go, Lisa, and then Anna can go after her. Okay, there you go. Um, thank you very much. I actually also had like more policy related question that we will <laughs> see if you can answer. But I, I think it's really interesting what you were also pressing at the last year and what we should take away. Maybe the main takeaway with the adjustment of wages, there's a drop, but it adjusts over time, which, of course, policymaker, this is a hot topic and a hot um, debate right now also on, on what's the impact of wages. So I was wondering, do you have any explanation on sort of why this happens? Why do we see, why do wages don't persist at a lower stage, but why do they seem to adjust back or, or not drop over time? And do you, is that something, I mean, can we, because other countries would also look at this and find this interesting, not just my uh, German policymakers, but do you think that we can draw any is this a conclusion um, that could also hold for other countries? I mean, I understand that's very difficult since you have only studied Germany here, but depending on what how you see the reason behind wages not being so negatively affected over time, do you think that that's also something that could be hold for other countries? Maybe some speculations more than actual answers, but it's interesting from a policy point of view. Thank you. And thanks for a really nice and interesting presentation. Thank you. Um, yes, so first about the wage effect. So um, what we think might explain the um, short, well, the short run negative effect is, is pretty obvious, but what might happen afterwards is that recent immigrants, they come, they have lower reservations wages, so they're more the, the the wage at which they are willing to work is generally lower so this kind of uh, reduces the perceived um, hiring costs of firms which might then incentivize them to to post new job offers and which results in employment growth and then also in the general equilibrium leads to positive wage effects afterwards um and with regards to comparing the effects to other countries in Europe, so there are papers which looked at the effects of EU immigration in uh, Great Britain, for instance, which um, abolished the restrictions of free movement earlier than Germany. So they abolished it, I think, 2007, 2008, and they find have similar findings. So the um, wage effects were not that negative as initially expected. I hope that gives you some brief answer. Uh, Anna, um, I see you raised your hand. Yeah, thank you, uh, Lisa, it was very interesting. I'm uh, a bit curious, uh, I mean, I would like to take uh, to know your take on why do you find differences in the results in the 1990s and in the in the current period to uh, to put it in that way, and because I think um, the type of migrants that I mean you have mentioned that in the presentation, right? It, they are super different. So I th I think it would be good if you elaborate more on this, because as you mentioned in the 1990s we have refugees who somehow had the pressure that they were going to stay in Germany. And I don't know, they on um, they took uh, language courses or they did some form of apprenticeships. Whereas here, if you don't make it, you just leave. You don't feel that pressure to, to integrate. So I don't know whether you could integrate this more into, into your argument because obviously the, the effects on employment are gonna be different. So I think the, the differential effects that you find on employment for me are very interesting. And also I found very puzzling, I know that you mentioned them, <laughs> don't pay too much attention to this, but why do we see these negative effects in wages at the top of the income scale? 
um, that's something that I, I mean, I tried to figure out why, but what, what do you think is the reason there or is just some, um, I don't know, think of the model of what is, what is the cause there in, in your take? Um, but I think a very interesting presentation. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, to your first remark. Um, yeah, I think what you say is true. It's they, these are two completely different groups. No? So those in the 1990s were refugees, and many of them actually had to leave at the end of the 1990s again. So they they did not stay, and probably it's just very difficult to compare them all together with respect to the labor market effect in Germany. Because yeah, because now now the recent immigrants, the, those EU immigrants, yes, they can just leave and stay, and that's why we also call the paper temporary migration because it's so important for Germany, and I think it actually rather poses an argument for saying why it's so good to have this free movement of workers because it neither benefits the receiving countries when those rather unsuccessful immigrants stay, but it also does not um, benefit the, the migrants themselves. So yes, that's uh, one point. And then you were you are talking about these um, this um, very negative effects here, right? Okay, yeah. Um, I would say that's mostly entirely an econometric <laughs> problem because um, well, what we have is that um, as in most countries uh, in Germany, wages and above the social security contribution threshold, they are top coded. So we impute uh, wages. So um, there might be some problems with this procedure or probably also this group of persons is very heterogeneous. So um, there might be a lot of things happening. So that's why we say we do not really trust these um, measures here and also if you look at the density of recent arrivals, so there are very few, so I would say that probably like 4% of new arrivals actually earn so high wages that they would be in the, actually compete with very high wage um, natives. So um, it, from an economic um, side of view, it does not make sense that there's this strong negative effect. We still have a couple of minutes left. Are there any more questions, comments? I see Theodora. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, so I'm wondering whether you have tried to compute the elasticity of substitution across labor types, similar to how does my do, and how it compares. I could not hear the question entirely. Could you repeat? So Dusman et al, they uh, estimate these elasticity of substitutions across labor types, right? Mm -hmm. And for them, I think it, it comes down to something around one. So close to a Cobb Douglas type of production function. So I'm wondering whether you have tried to compute them as well. Yeah, yeah, we actually computed them. Um, you got me, I don't remember the ex exact size of the elasticity of substitution that we compute, but um, we did this exercise actually to investigate whether the um, number of recent arrivals actually changes where um, the um, domestic workforce uh, is located in the wage sites, because that would be problematic. And uh, we find that it does not. So we, we just follow the same procedure as Dusman et al. do. And um, yeah, we can confirm that according to this approach, it does not change. But to be honest, I don't remember. Um, the the point exact is that it would be in a way interesting to see whether the Jaeger adjustment uh, affects the magnitude of this uh, um, estimate that should be structural, right? So it would be interesting to see how much it affects the estimate after adjusting for the um, for the stairs, basically. But yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. I do not see any more hands uh, or any questions in the chat box. So I'll assume that everyone got the chance to ask their question. Thank you again, Luisa, very much for this very useful presentation and um, 
for those that are interested, the presentation is going to be online. So the recording is going to be online in a week or so. Um, we already have scheduled also our next migration seminar, and it's going to be on the 27th of October. Uh, the speaker is Professor Emmanuel Oriol. Uh, she is from uh, Toulouse School of Economics, and she will be talking about uh, controlling irregular migration. Can a market for temporary foreign worker permits help? So if you're interested, the event is online on uh, the, the website, and I've also sent an email to anyone that's registered to the mailing list of the migration seminar series. Thank you again, Luisa, and I wish you all a, a great week ahead. Thank you for your um, attention and for hosting me. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.